Um, so um, I wanted to uh, talk about the markets of Rome. And I was thinking over the lecture series that we've done with Dante and a lot of uh, lectures that I used to give when I taught at University of Washington and other places, um, I never talked about the markets. And I thought, wow, what a great opportunity um, and uh, a sympathetic audience. So I, I'm just uh, happy to, to share this experience because it is very personal uh, as well as intellectual to me. Um, and I'll try not to be too heavy on the intellectual side. And then I'm gonna end this with uh, something more personal um, just from my experiences. So um, I'm gonna run through a list of um, I Mercati dei Rioni Romani um, and present it much like a, uh, a tour, a, a walking tour virtually of course with pictures. Um, I don't have any sounds or smells or tastes to pro provide to you tonight but um, certainly we've got the visuals. So I'm showing Campo dei Fiori here. We're gonna actually end with that one. So uh, here's the lineup. Um, first, I'd like to start right in the heart of Rome and we'll talk a little bit about the Foro Romano. Again, um, this is gonna be a gastronomical sampler. So I'm not gonna try to go too far into depth on these things, just pick up some highlights and, and interesting things of note that I think of when I think of these places and, and share them with you. Um, Foro Romano, and then uh, next to them, I have listed all the Rione, and probably most people here know, are acquainted with the Rione in Rome. Uh, they comprise of uh, the Comune di Roma, and originally there were 14 in the Centro Storico. Uh, it was expanded under Mussolini to 22. But uh, like I said, we've got eight here. So we'll just run through them real quickly here. The Foro Romano, um, Rome Forum, Mercato di Traiano, Trajan's Market, and Monti, right at the very edge of it, uh, close to Foro Romano. Foro Boario, another forum, uh, which you may or may not know, and Ripa, not far again. Uh, so these are all pretty much in the center. Portico di Ottavia is in um, the ghetto, and that is in San, Sant'Angelo. Uh, then we'll move a little far south down the river. So as you know, Rome has this, I'm going to use my little pointer here on this map, the bend here. Uh, actually, it flows, uh, you know, toward um, Ostia. But we're going to head um, to Porta Portes or Mercato di Testaccio, which is right here. Um, Porta Portese, Piazza Navona, and then finally Campo dei Fiori, which are both in Parioni. Let's see here. Of course, uh, all these uh, Rioni have symbols, and one of my favorite urbanistic elements in Rome are the placards and the symbols. And actually you can locate yourself pretty much anywhere in Rome if you know the Rione system and kind of are aware of uh, the boundaries of them. Uh, in fact, the boundaries are marked. Um, and one of these placards is here in Travertine for Parione. Um, again, here are just some of the samples, uh, Rione de la Pigna and other ones that the Pantheon's in that one. But every Rione, is, is you know, known for, if not one, many things. But we're gonna focus on what it's known for uh, food-wise and what they have to offer to sell in the markets. So we'll uh, continue on our journey here. Um, when I first came to Rome in 1987, I'll just date myself there, um, my friends and I, which is depicted here, uh, started, getting to know Rome right away. That's all we did for two weeks was walk the city uh, as architecture students, sketching it, getting to know the history and um, you know, sharing with each other the information that we found. So we, we created little guidebooks for each other. Uh, my Rione, and we all took possession of our Rione. Mine was Trastevere. 
And um, we split them up and, and I just had a great time getting to know Rome that way. So um, again, here's, here's our uh, lineup. We'll start Campitelli is right here, uh, the Roman Forum. Um, then we'll uh, move over to, um, what did I say, Monti. Uh, here's the, and actually, uh, here might be the Exedra of uh, the Forum of Trajan, Poro Traiani, but the market is actually in Monti on the hillside. Um, and then uh, we'll talk about uh, Ripa, San Angelo, again, Castaccio, Tastevere. And then back to the medieval portion of Rome, uh, the tangled uh, mess of streets known as Parioni. So um, the forum itself, uh, you could say, started uh, much like the Greek agora as a marketplace. Um, and then gradually buildings uh, surrounded an open area define the open area, often uh, defined by cubiculi or, or market stalls. We can only imagine the evolution of, of the marketplace in the forum as it you know, happened probably around 700 BC. But um, this map here, it's a Baedeker map. Um, it shows all the layers of Rome. Rome is just heavy in, in layers for its urban morphology. So. Um, the forum is basically right here. The markets, stalls here, you can see cubiculum here at an earlier period of time, probably Republican. Also here are cubiculi that uh, helped define the forum from its very early stages. And then the tabularium is uh, the seat of the government, uh, now where the Campidoglio right here sits. Um, but of course, on Roman foundations, you can even see that this is the tabularium here. But I don't want to get too far into the, uh, the history of, of the forum, other than to say um, it really was, I believe, started as a marketplace. And uh, probably groceries as well as tax collectors were side by side. And uh, the politicians and everybody, it was just a, a great mixing place, as piazzas are today. Uh, and that's why the forum serves really as a model for, for most uh, um, piazzas and markets uh, to follow. Uh, nearby, um, just a stone's throw away, are the Forti Imperiali, the greatest of which is the, uh, you could say at least in size, is Trajan's uh, Forum, and Il Mercato di Traiano, which is forms kind of a border of that. So here we're looking at the markets right on the hillside here with this uh, great exedra here. Um, these were probably filled with statuary here, but uh, they think that possibly it says here, I, I really like this diagram because it gives you a three-dimensional view of um, how this uh, marketplace, what you could say is probably the original shopping mall of all time. Um, how it works, um, at least on levels physically. And um, it's interesting to me that it mentions uh, not only the architectural features to keep rain off your head and some of the halls, and I won't go over all that architectural wise, but um, it's interesting to me that they mention here, uh, the main hall and the four free corn rations were distributed to Roman men. I don't know why the women didn't get corn too, but um, then they've got amphorae, pottery containers were discovered here uh, with wine and oil. Um, they think maybe the ground floor shops were the coolest area and therefore the market would likely have sold groceries and flowers. Um, but as you can see, it's a, it's a complex, multi-leveled, sophisticated market system, um, which, uh, wasn't always copied in, in ancient uh, structures. That, that's what makes this one so unique and it's so well preserved. I really recommend you visit it if you haven't already in your travels to Rome. Sorry, let's see, next here. 
That's a, is that the previous slide? This didn't work. I'm sorry, here I'm having a hard time advancing. Next. There. Okay. So, uh, Foro Borario is uh, another um, marketplace that was, uh, since ancient times, a place to uh, take loads off the river. Um, here's the river Tiber in this map. Foro Borario is right here. Um, it was uh, known as a cattle market. And from ancient times, you can see in its name, uh, Borario or Borario in Latin uh, means <clears throat> oxen. And here, this is a, an engraving probably from the 18th century uh, showing some oxen uh, and cattle stalls and that sort of thing. But they're still showing also the mix of buildings that bordered uh, the markets themselves. And typically you'll see Roman temples, like this is the temple of Portunus depicted here in real life up here. And uh, this is the portico of Janus, I believe that's still there. And uh, this is the temple of Vesta. But um, it's interesting to me that, uh, you know, meats here were sold um, probably mostly it was a, a stratified um, distribution in the Roman economic system. Mostly people that could afford to eat meat uh, were the rich, and uh, typically the, the innards and the offal were, were affordable to the masses. <clears throat> Let's see if I can, there we go. Um, where there's meat, there's got to be fish. So nearby in the uh, Rione San Angelo, which is known as the ghetto, um, Rione 11, Unici. Uh, we have Port Portico di Ottavia, where um, it was actually a portal that served also as another landing point near the river um, to afford um, access to the rest of the city. And here we have a 19th century romantic painting depicting the fish market. We've got some fish laid out on table. And this is how it looks today. But it, it's not a temple. It's, a, it's actually a, a, port, uh, a portal. Um, and it didn't always have this arch here. That was a, a later, probably medieval edition. But um, Rome is so rich with layers of history, as you know, just all sorts of things going on at different periods of time. And, and very within the last, I want to say, 15 years, they excavated to see what was going on underneath. Let's see here. So uh, moving along, then we've uh, pretty much uh, covered a, a space from Capitelli to San Angelo to Ripa here, a little bit of Monte. Then I wanted to head south toward the statue. And, um, this is an interesting, uh, interesting uh, depiction of architectural rejuvenation, uh, renovation. Um, it's uh, actually a restored uh, building from the 19th century where uh, it was called the Matatoyo. It was where they slaughtered cattle. And um, they have, uh, still this armature in place. These are racks that carried uh, sides of beef and, and carcasses and so forth and maneuvered them around the site. There were actually several, several buildings uh, in this area. Also want to mention Testaccio not only was known for its cattle uh, through the centuries, uh, much later than Foro Borario, uh, but also for the oil imports from ancient times. So the symbol of Testaccio is the amphora right here. Uh, it's interesting, you can go and visit the hill there. They have a, a mound pretty much in the center of the Rione that you can climb, uh, made entirely out of uh, part of the shards. And uh, I was reading there, there's an estimated maybe 53 million uh, amphorae that they broke to make that hill. So if you ever have a chance to visit that. But I just find it wonderful that they restored this building and then made a, a market. This is the interior of that. 
uh, in Mercato di Testaccio, they made a market out of it. And uh, you can see fruits and vegetables and kind of the mall-like atrium um, with some 19th century detailing and so forth. But I think it was very well done and very recently done. <clears throat> um, moving across the river then to Porto Portese to Trastevere is a, a market of a different sort. Uh, there's quite a diversity of markets. I, I'm hoping that you, you're starting to grasp it all these markets are quite different and known for different things. If you have a, a free Sunday morning when you're in Rome, uh, be sure to check out Porta Portese because it's a fantastic place to go uh, either secondhand clothes shopping, new clothes shopping, pirated clothes shopping, <laughs> um, antiques especially, all kinds of things. You can, you can catch a bite to eat, but there's very little by way of uh, things to buy for your dinner there. It's more uh, a place to walk, to see and be seen, and have a good time mingling. This was actually taken in COVID times. You can see we've got some masks, but I, I don't think social distancing is being practiced too much there. But um, again, Trastevere, Rione Tredici, uh, definitely worth your visit. This, this is Porta Portese right here without the people around it. Uh, it's a um, you know, it looks like a Mannerist or early Baroque um, part, pretty complete portal. Um, as you can see, it's interesting to note that like uh, Porta di Ottavia, markets seem to gather around crowded entry places into either the city or neighborhood districts. Um, it seems to be a typical, historically a typical place to set up your market. Finally, so um, let's see, here's Testaccio here. This would be the hill right here. Um, it's a very gridded area. Testaccio didn't become a um, incorporated Rione till Mussolini times. So it, it carries a Rione Venti. Um, like I said, there are 22 now. And then we saw Trastevere, which Porta Portese actually starts right here and then it heads kind of Southwest. Uh, but we're going to uh, swim back up the river upstream and we're going to end up in Pareone here and um, Stadio di Domiziano. Why, you might ask? Um, well, this is the urban morphology of Piazza Navona. I think it's a very famous one. Uh, you can see the shape of the stadium taken here by a reconstruction. Um, and in the, um, here it says OG, you can see the very form of the stadium of Domitian is in this wonderful echoing of, of the shape of the stadium. And the, the space still remains uh, largely free and intact with some famous architectural pieces, um, so on and so on and so forth. But not many people know that Piazza Navona was also for years a market now, today, uh, they don't have a daily market uh, like some places in Rome or even a, a weekly one. Uh, this one's just a seasonal one that comes every Christmas. And it, I was just delighted the first time I, I was there to see uh, them set up, of course, a, a lot of junk and trinkets and, and Christmas ornaments and things like that. But they even had a carousel there. But it really electrified and and added some magic to an already beautiful piazza, probably one of Rome's finest. Um, here it's been recently restored as well. Um, but uh, Piazza Navona used to be a vegetable market for centuries, but that was uh, taken up by <clears throat> this space right here. It was just moved a, a few blocks south, and we're going to talk about that. But Teatro di Pompei, you might ask, why are we looking at that? Uh, again, I'm going to talk a little bit about urban morphology because I can't get away from it in my architectural training. But um, Parione is uh, this district largely right around here, including, a, here I should point at this one, this area right here, including Piazza Navona. Uh, so these two great spaces, along with Piazza Farnese and some other great ones, all in one rione, um, are right 
next to each other, one, two, three. And um, I wanted to show you that this shape of the theater, an inner, inner city theater, which is rare even by Roman uh, standards and uh, ancient standards, typically theaters were out in the country, if you think of the Greek theaters and so forth. This was an urban theater uh, built from the ground up. So you can see it's much like the Colosseum with its tiers of arches. And then there's three stories. And then um, this theater, which is very unique, uh, was built right at the apex of it um, and at the um, uh, height of the curve there along the curve. So this theater, I just want to point out because it basically corresponds with this sort of outline right here, that roof form, which is the UW's Rome Center in Rome called known as Palazzo Pio. Um, and you can see the curvature um, of the theater in the city form. And you can still visit the theater's uh, bowels if you go way down in the basement. They have a fantastic restaurant there. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's still there, Da Pancrazio. Uh, definitely worth it. And friendly guys, they'll, they'll show you the history of the theater and they're more than happy to take you into some of the more uh, less uh, visited places, which are the, the spaces under the theater. Um, but anyway, this uh, temple borders Campo dei Fiori right here. It kind of looks over this, um, let's say, western edge or eastern edge of the theater. Um, so in this sketch that I did here, here's a picture of where that, uh, this building right here, roughly represents where the theater, the theater's uh, temple of Venus, Victrix, uh, was located. And then um, this kind of shows the view from Campo dei Fiori looking as the facade of the Palazzo Pio kind of fades away into another piazza called Piazza del Bicione. This is kind of the look of it. This was taken before they restored it. Of course, now, since it, ever since 2000, Rome has gotten a big facelift uh, for the Jubilee. And all these buildings are beautiful white now or travertine or painted in pastels, which is a shock to me because when, when I originally went to Rome um, in the 80s, it, everything was umber and orange and, and burnt. And it was all kind of the same tone and dirty. Um, but the, here you can see it over on uh, Campo dei Fiori's facades here. Um, of course, Campo dei Fiori meaning field of flowers, quite literally. That's why I'm showing this picture. You can see some of the pastel colors now that line the streets of Rome and restore it to its Baroque uh, grandeur. Um, anyway, this is a sketch that I did uh, just to get to know the neighborhood. And then um, this view is taken from that temple uh, height up, up high on, on the edge of the theater on what is known as the Tower of, of Campo, or the Tower of Palazzo di Pio. And you're looking from the student lounge down onto the marketplace, which sets up and takes down every day except Sunday. And uh, right in the center is our friend and heretic, uh, Giordano Bruno. Uh, just a little bit of history of that one because he does dominate the square here. Nice bronze statue. He died in uh, February 1600. Um, he uh, was burned for his ideas on um, what was called uh, cosmic pluralism. And uh, the notice, the, no, the notion that, uh, like Galileo and Copernicus, that the universe was expanding, there could be life on other planets and other galaxies. And of course, the Vatican had his books put on the list of uh, unused or not to be known um, books. Uh, so he was burned in the square and is commemorated, but um, the joy of the market is, is unparalleled. Uh, I think it's been changing slowly, 
But in this uh, picture, you can see it's mostly still fruits and vegetables and meats and mushrooms and uh, just about anything you can think of to cook Italian food, uh, which was our backyard. And uh, just want to give you some flavor now. I'm trying to uh, convey some of the images uh, that I've collected over the years. Uh, of course, uh, they have a temporary meat market too. You didn't have to go to the Testaccio Foro Boradio here. You've got it right in your neighborhood. And of course, uh, the Campo dei Fiori is, is rimmed with uh, shops as well. And um, Alimentari, Ruggeri is one of them, some great ones. And then uh, fruit and vegetables. And then some of the uh, infrastructure uh, caught my eye. And I uh, noticed that if you have an open air market and you want to set up and take down every day, it's nice to have a little power. So you have these little cobblestones that can lift out of the ground and you can plug in. Or the, the city's water system, which is always going and very delicious, clean water. I drank out of these many, many times. Uh, not worried about any bacteria. Um, again, um, lots of things always going on in the market. I just threw this in there because of uh, the, I think this was taken in the uh, late 90s, but um, of course, uh, where, where you have people buying meat and, and animal uh, carcasses, there'll be the protesters in Italy. And so <laughs> they're gonna uh, shout in the megaphone, uh, no allevamenti in batteria, basically we don't want uh, livestock and battery farms. So um, just a little social commentary, always present in Italian life. And then of course, I, I was serious when I said they take down every day and they got to clean up every day. So there's always a big mound of boxes and they always, here's the garbage truck right here, always left it spick and span clean. It was amazing every day. They usually took down about two, two o'clock in the afternoon. So you had to do your shopping pretty much in the morning and early afternoon uh, to get ready for the long afternoon meal. Um, and then uh, the, the final slides I'm just uh, showing as sort of people that I captured on film. Um, if you're wondering what this guy on a bicycle is doing, you may have guessed it by now. He's a knife sharpener. Uh, there are just spectacular uh, figures that I ran across over the years that I just couldn't help but uh, snap a candid shot, even when they were or weren't looking. Um, this guy, I have to say, he became my kind of daily market friend because not only because I bought a lot of things from him, but he uh, he was very. Uh, he would always shout pasta meeks and all this stuff. So he had all these fantastic spices, nuts, um, you know, snacks and, and that sort of thing. So I uh, really enjoyed seeing him over and over when I <laughs> repeat visits over the years. Um, this was actually taken nearby, but I couldn't uh, help but include some of these other characters. Um, this is actually on the Via Corso Emanuele, just really close by. The Cancelleria, another famous uh, piazza and palazzo is, is, is right beyond this violinist here, but he looks like he's having a great time. And then this guy sold mushrooms. He's got lira in his hand, in case you didn't notice. Uh, it's a little, it's a colored, uh, looks like probably a, I don't know, maybe a 10,000 lira note. I think they were blue back when they had lira. And then finally, I just wanted to wrap up by uh, mentioning um, that when I went to Rome originally and then in subsequent years, I would always uh, either teach with or teach for uh, Professor Astra Zarina, who founded the program. And uh, she uh, probably valued cooking above architecture in a way, <laughs> or at least uh, more, I mean, she was just a, a great cook, um, always invited us to her didactic meals where we learned about the history and the ingredients of cooking. 
Uh, of course, Campo de Fiori being close by was a perfect laboratory. So um, what we did, uh, I'm showing this picture because what we did every um, Thanksgiving was to take these turkeys, stuff them um, American style, and then um, put them in the oven across, the, we would parade across the Campo de Fiori with the two turkeys and have these guys in the uh, forno would bake them for us. And that was just a special treat. Um, we'd come back four hours later and, and we'd take them up back up to Palazzo Pio student lounge and, and we'd have a big feast. And with that, um, that's all I have to say about markets. <laughs>